Good morning, Endeavor, and a special good morning to you today, Mark. Good morning, Houston, and good morning, Tucson, Arizona, as well. Uh, that song's from a band named Calexico from my wife Gabby's hometown. They're, they're from uh, Tucson, Arizona, as well. And it's uh, about two people on a trip reaching um, across the distance, and it references places like Signal Hill and Gate Pass in Tucson. And I know she really, really wants to get back there and is really looking forward to that. So it's uh, an appropriate song because that's, uh, that's coming soon. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Mark. We appreciate that. Endeavor, we are on board with you on the flight deck. Yeah, thanks, Megan. And if you'd like the maneuver, we can kick it off right now or we can wait until about 1352, it looks like. I'm checking. This is uh, board the flight deck uh, of Endeavor as the crew members uh, get ready for all of the undock fly around and re rendezvous uh, activities. Commander Mark Kelly in the forward right in this view in his uh, commander seat on the flight deck. Pilot Greg Johnson to the left. And behind them, uh, Greg Chamatoff. Uh, you see polishing the windows for good camera views out the overhead windows. You're looking at the aft flight deck of Endeavour. The two uh, windows looking aft are, are the two windows that look out into the payload bay of the shuttle. Roberto Vittori, mission specialist number two, who also serves as the flight engineer for launch and landing. He, uh, for those events, he is actually seated in a, uh, uh, a chair, a seat right between and just behind the commander and pilot. The mission specialist seats on the flight deck and on the mid deck are removed and stowed away during on-orbit operations for landing, uh, launch and landing activities, they're bolted to the uh, floor of the flight deck in the mid-deck. Endeavour Houston on the big loop, you are go for undocking. Copy, we are go for undocking. Station is ready for undocking. Houston, copies. Endeavour uh, undocking from the International Space Station uh, right on schedule at 10.55 p.m. Central, 11.55 Eastern as the two spacecraft fly 215 miles above Bolivia, tracking northeasterly. Endeavour uh, setting her sails one last time, uh, departing the International Space Station after 12 missions to the orbiting complex. Set this thing up. 
All right, here we go. A auto burn. There we go. See you auto burn. As uh, Endeavour continues to uh, fly around the station, the International Space Station, uh, stretching 357 feet from tip to tip, the pressurized volume, uh, perpendicular volume there is about uh, 240 feet. At the bottom, the docking port from which uh, Endeavour departed the European Columbus Science Laboratory off to the left and the Japanese experiment module Kibo, the Japanese word for hope, off to the right. And then heading down the length of the volume, the Harmony connecting node to which those modules are attached in turn is attached to the U.S. Laboratory Destiny. Atop Destiny is the center point of that uh, 300, almost 360 degree degree uh, or 60 foot long truss structure and then the first U.S. element of the International Space Station launched uh, back in December of 1998. The Unity module is the connecting point uh, from the U.S. segment to the Russian segment of the station. Next in line the first ever component of the International Space Station, the Zarya control module with its uh, solar rays uh, uh, mostly retracted in accordion style. The Zvezda module on the back end is the uh, the next module with its uh, solar arrays deployed, uh, served as the early living quarters uh, and the control section of the Russian segment of the complex. And then on the back end with the scissor-shaped solar arrays is the European Space Agency automa automated uh, transfer vehicle known as the Johannes Kepler. It's been uh, a part of the space station since uh, late February when it arrived delivering supplies to the station. It's one of several visiting vehicles uh, that the station hosts, including the Russian Soyuz uh, capsule, which delivers crews to and from the station and also the progress supply vehicles. Six hundred and forty feet uh, from the International Space Station. Endeavour now approaching uh, the fly around of uh, about 180 degrees now of the 360 degree fly around. So Endeavour is now almost directly behind the station. Bravo. Uh, that, uh, that block of activity means that the uh, shuttle crew is now going to initiate a radar acquisition, switching the KU band antenna system from the comm mode to radar mode. Beautiful view of the uh, Russian segment of the station with uh, Endeavour 600 uh, feet away. Endeavour Houston on two for radar acquisition. Mark, we need to need you to check your config on A1 upper, please. We see a couple switches out of config. Okay, uh, just call them up to us, Houston. KU power to standby. 
got it. Okay, it looks like you're in a good config now. All right, thank you. Six hundred feet uh, from the space station, tracking toward the uh, northern coast of Australia. Endeavour now behind and below. And then all the way there, after going to panel, we went power to on. I think we need power back on again. We concur. Mark, we see a good KU config now, thanks. Copy. Now uh, heading across the Tasman Sea, the between uh, Australia and New Zealand. Endeavour in the space station, uh, about nine minutes from moving into an orbital sunset as they track off the southern coast of New Zealand. Endeavour silhouetted against the uh, cloud cover of the uh, earth below the... Go ahead, Drew. Hi, Megan. I know our uh, messages this morning said uh, disregard if the storm doesn't switch over to TCS uh, source, uh, but I'm happy to manually switch it if folks want it. It's not a big deal. And Drew, that's not required, but thanks for the offer. Okay, copy, thanks. This view uh, at a range of 3,100 feet. Go ahead. Yeah, we're back. All right. Did you bring more ice cream? No, you got all of that. Looks great out there. That's a good tick.
Good burn, Endeavor. So with that, Endeavor has performed the final separation maneuver from the International Space Station. And the result of the uh, separation burn number three, uh, you could see the thruster jets firing on the nose and tail of uh, Endeavor. The result of that burn is, is that Endeavor will phase away from the station now at a rate of about 10.3 uh, statute miles every orbit or every hour and a half. Here in the uh, shuttle flight control room, the uh, shift change is just about to uh, get underway with the Orbit 1 team uh, just about to wrap up its final shift of the mission. Seven are complete with storm, and with that, uh, we're closing another chapter on the flight. I'd like to say that over the past uh, year and a half, it's been a pleasure to work with the uh, software and hardware developers for storm. Everybody did a great job in getting the uh, components ready for the flight, and we look forward to uh, con you know, continued developments of this uh, hardware and software and hope that it contributes to the development of future vehicles. It's been an honor and privilege from the crew of Endeavor. Drew, we appreciate your words. We also appreciate your hard work, and uh, we've got a room full of happy people down here. Thanks very much. And Megan, did they think they got uh, good data? Yes, they got good data. All right, thanks.